Hello, my name is Justin Bright, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program, version 1.2.2, which I am tempted to make Kerbals a multi-planetary species. Okay, so the next thing that we are going to be bringing down into Duna's sphere of influence uh, for our Flags and Footprints mission is the Geo Rover, which has all sorts of science and um, surface scanning technologies that we are going to be using to do geology on the surface to make sure that the landing location that I have picked is actually going to be a good one. So this is once again a it has a transfer stage that is not going to make it into orbit so we are going to uh, be making a nice close pass over duna's surface and then i'm going to be kicking this stage off and um, this is using the uh, honey badger vtol engine so this is going to be super like way overpowered basically why does it have so why has fuel been taken out of there that's interesting um huh yeah, I have no idea why that doesn't have... I wonder if I just made that lighter for some reason. Anyways, um, we are just going to kick this stage off uh, probably right above Duna's atmosphere. Hopefully it'll burn up and then we will be getting this thing into orbit and it'll have about 2800 meters per second left of Delta V, which should be plenty to get it into a nice uh, location for its re-entry. So... Let's plan our re-entry, or my entry for the first time anyways, because uh, this is something that uh, I can actually land right now if I would like. So let's drop ourselves a maneuver node. Yeah, roughly polar's probably fine, but we should be off to one side so that hopefully we can actually get in. Oops. Okay. Uh, trajectories is not any help at the moment, but that's probably fine. Uh, let's go ahead and just make this burn right now. Make sure that we're controlling from the right place. Control from here. Aha, see? This is why we check. Just burn that in so that's nice and close. That looks good. So at the periapsis, let's go ahead and see what we have to do here. Yeah, so we have 817 meters per second of Delta V2 shed. Um, so I think we should just get into Duna's sphere of influence before we go any further, just so that we can see what we're working with here. Although I might, I might just kick off this uh, transfer stage now because I'm not certain that I need it and I'm not certain that I'll be able to make sure it doesn't become debris. So we'll just do this. And then when we get into doing a sphere of influence, we're going to kick this thing off. All right, so we are in the sphere of influence of Duna, and it looks like we will, and now Trajectories is working, so uh, we will see that we will be inside this atmosphere and crash at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to point this at orbital retrograde, and we're just going to kick this stage straight off right from here. Uh, we're going to throw away some fuel in so doing, but so be it, I think. See ya. Cool. So now let's control from the probe that I have attached here so that it's nice and sideways. And now we can actually do some maneuvering to get ourselves into a nice landing. And this is going to be a pure, well, it's not pure propulsive, but I don't have a heat shield. So I'm going to be needing to do uh, a big burn to make sure that I don't burn up. Because uh, you cannot quite ignore Duna's atmosphere um, as far as that's concerned, even with uh, even um, with all this fuel, I can't I can't just ignore it and expect things to work out. So yeah, we can just circularize normally. I don't need to I don't need to be weird about this. I'm just going to circularize, and then we're going to figure out our uh, entry trajectory at that point. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. With a little bit of a inclination change, we should be able to re uh, get there right on this pass. So let's save the game. 
There we go. Now we're actually seeing uh, trajectories doing its work. And there we go. So the location that we are coming to is um, a, an intersection of three different biomes. So I will show you guys in just a moment what that looks like once uh, the, actually that satellite's right overhead, but I need to make this burn. So I'll show you after this is finished and hopefully this doesn't explode. I'm hopeful. All right, so we are burning. Burning to get this rover into the atmosphere of Duna to prepare it for the journey that some Kerbals have ahead. They're still a few hundred days out. Ooh, that's a little wonky. It's very difficult to turn in certain directions here. Um, some Kerbals have a journey ahead of them to uh, explore and map out this location. Come on, keep pointing in the right direction, please. But uh, we first need to get this uh, the rover down, which will help them do the science and live on the surface of Duna. Alrighty. So we are just going to flip this around and we will see how we do as we come in. All right, so we are touching the atmosphere of Duna even as we speak. So let's retract our solar panels, see if we can't save those, perhaps. Um, and I wonder if this is a terrible idea. Retract antenna. Okay, we're still okay. Thank goodness. Uh, but let's actually see. We should have some science that we can do on our way down that we are not going to be able to get at another time. So this is low atmosphere. So let's go ahead and grab all of this science. And we will hold on to that for our um, for the Kerbals that will be arriving. All right, so we are just going to be holding this uh, surface uh, retrograde position. And according to trajectories, we should be just overshooting, which is perfect for our uh, purposes, because if we just overshoot, then we will be able to use the engines to slow us down and land uh, precisely on the navigation marker. All right, we are entering further into Duna's uh, thin but still obnoxious atmosphere. Um, we do have parachutes on the side of this, so we will be able to use those to help us get down a little ways. And I'll probably leave this thing attached until such time as the Kerbals arrive. Like, I'll leave this lander stage all set up just in case, because you never know. You never know what you might need when you get down there. Um, but then this will be able to actually detach, and they will have their location that they the, they'll have their mobile base that they'll need to uh, perform their science and live on the surface of Duna. All right, so we are getting down into the quote unquote thick part of the atmosphere. So I anticipate we are about to lose our uh, signal, and then we're going to find out how aerodynamically stable this vehicle is. So we are slowing down, slowing down, and we're actually coming overhead, so I might actually just go ahead and burn really hard instead of losing our signal. We're just going to burn so that we go straight down. Seems good to me. All right, so we have a lot of delta V to make this burn, so I'm not um, I'm not concerned about making this. So we've actually come to nearly a dead stop in the atmosphere. Uh, so yeah, we should start moving straight down thanks to the wonder of um, the atmosphere. So we just now need to get ourselves pointed in the right direction. Um, I wish I had like an opposite. Yeah, there we go. I could kind of see. 
you can kind of see which way I'm going. Um, but yeah, I wish I had like a... Like when you have a target, it shows you where the target's not. Kind of, sort of. Like it shows the... Um, what's behind them. Or like where it is... Uh, retrograde to you. Like it, it, it shows both sides of its orbit that intersects with you. Um, which is super helpful when you're doing this sort of thing and trying to land on something. Alright, and this doesn't actually need to be super duper precise, which is uh, a good thing, because this was, this obviously, this was dropped from orbit as well, and the idea of this mission is we are going to be driving around between three different biomes that um, all have useful resources for our first base bases on Duna. All right, we're coming down. We are about, we are less than uh, 2,000 meters away. We are about 1,000 meters away now and coming in hot. Here we go. Let's start killing that velocity. Looks like we are going to be very, very close indeed. I'm feeling pretty good about that. And here we are. We are almost there. 156 meters away. Oh no, a rock! Do not land on rock. I know you could just sink through it, I don't care. Boop. And we are down on the surface of Duna with our rover. Yes! Awesome! So we can do, and we are in the biome of the Midland Sea. Hmm, interesting. So let's run the analysis here. Hmm, numbers. What's this? Surface water? My goodness. Uh, yes, so let's talk about what that means in a, for a moment. All right, so let's talk for just a moment about how we picked that site. So let's open up the curb net to take a look at what's directly below us. And it's in darkness right now, of course, but this is just above what I have picked out as landing site Delta. So there are three biomes here that we find interesting. So this little spit here is the uh, northern shelf biome, and that's uh, not where the Geo Rover landed, but it's close. Uh, the northern shelf has... Um, silicate substrate gypsum and dirt and there may be a flowchart later if you guys actually find that sort of thing interesting but uh in what i've basically done is i position myself over each of these biomes every single biome on duna and i use the narrowband scanner to say yes i am over the poles right now um and then i used this the curb net to say, okay, what's directly beneath me? Okay, so at this point, you can see I have this much alumina, this much dirt, this much exotic minerals, etc. So we can see all of the different resources that are available to us in a given biome. And I was, and with that, I created a spreadsheet that told me what mineral, what uh, resources were available at what biome. And in doing this, I discovered that. Um, silicate, substrate, gypsum, and dirt were available at this location, the northern shelf. At the poles, I have metallic ore, exotic minerals, rare metals, and uraninite. And finally, at... Um, doo -doo 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 -doo, at this biome here, uh, there is water, most importantly, minerals, and ore. And if you were uh, keeping track, all three of these biomes touch right here. Let me see, where can I see the poles? Yep, so right at this intersection here is what I have called landing site delta because it's at the intersection of three different biomes. So what this mission is now is to determine what is the border between those three biomes and uh, to mark that out with a flag so I can make that our base because we will have three separate bases that are um, sitting out next to each other um, and around this little location 
so that I will have access to all of the resources in one spot and that I will be able to use local logistics as opposed to planetary logistics to communicate the uh, resources back and forth and uh, kind of distribute the load of the base between those three different locations. Okay, so are you ready for some math? Uh, well, there's not going to be any math, but I did want to show you a little bit of how I came to this. Um, okay, so I wanted to show you a little bit of the work that I did to get uh, to come to this conclusion. And so what I did was, like I said, as I was flying over every individual biome, I captured the data that I got from the narrowband scanner. Uh, or from the curb net to write down like what were the numbers for each of these items or for each of these resources. And uh, in so doing, the important factor is generally, is it zero or is it not zero? Not so much what the individual numbers are, although that does play a little bit into uh, what I did in the next phase, which was to kind of just break it down into each one and see what was the easiest and closest way to bunch up all of the resources because you basically need everything on this list you need metallic ore minerals and substrate for material kits gypsum hydrates water for your um uh, gypsum and hydrates or water for your uh, farming exotic minerals rare metals silicates for your creation of specialized parts, uraninite to keep your reactors running, carbonite or ore to keep your uh, ships fuel, that sort of thing. So you need everything. So what's the easiest way to get all three or to get all of the resources that you need? Well, what I did was I just kind of broke it down and did a little bit of pivoting of these tables to figure out what would work best. And what I came up with was this little list down here, which is going to inform what we do next. Um, basically the idea is we have, uh, three bases, the Midland Sea, the Northern Shelf, and the Poles, and those three biomes are touching each other. So we're going to find the border between the three, and then we are going to get minerals, water, and ore at the Midland Sea, silicates, substrate, gypsum, and dirt at the Northern Shelf. We're going to get metallic ore, exotic minerals, rare metals, and uraninite at the poles. And if we can keep all of these bases within two kilometers of each other, we will be able to um, use local logistics to move everything around and uh, we won't have to worry about planetary logistics and all of the bases should be able to be self-sufficient. And that is going to be the start of our city on Duna. All right, so... I think, in general, I don't have anything that I really want to get moving or get finished up until we finish these two missions that we have going right now. Because right now we have the Far Horizons heading out to Elu, and we have the Starlifter shuttle taking the crew out to Duna for the Flags and Footprints mission. Uh, that's not going to be done for 190 days, and uh, Far Horizons is going to arrive at Elu in just 60. Um, so. I don't see any reason not to just fast forward two months and see what happens as far as everything else is concerned with the uh, uh, my my individual bases and everything else because I don't I mean I could be building stuff but I feel like what happens here is going to inform what happens going forward. Uh, there's really no point in making a really big clever uh, chemical rocket if I wind up using torch dries for things going going forward. So. Let's get moving to the future. Uh, so the thing that I'm mostly concerned about right now is our communications. It's reducing dramatically and rapidly. Eight, seven, six, five. Oh, I hope that it stays uh, because this thing is rated. It says for about a hundred, a hundred gigameters, and. We are getting very close to that. We are, uh, Elu is actually at 111 uh, gigameter uh, apoapsis. Uh, so Elu has about, uh, is about 111 gigameters over the sun right now. And Kerbin is actually a little bit on the other side of it. Uh, where is Kerbin even? Yeah, it's almost exactly on the other side. So it's about as far away as it could possibly be at the moment. Uh, no, it could be further, but it's pretty dang far. Um... So, the communications is real dicey. We have about a 4% signal strength, but that's good enough. Ha! That is good enough. 
I was worried that we weren't going to make it at all, but this looks like this is going to be just fine. So let's just get into the sphere of influence of Elu. Elu, hello, where are you? Elu, where are you? Point radial in. Point at Elu. Can you point Elu out for me? I just can't even see it. It's so far away still. I guess Elu has a large sphere of influence. Uh, we are about an hour away from the periapsis, so let's go ahead and circularize over that. 25,000 meters per second. Goodness gracious. Uh, but let's zoom it on in and see what kind of uh, node that gives us. So we are actually going to want to see if we can't push this in a little bit. Because we need to be in a polar orbit to do our survey scan. And also that's just, you know, good to help us figure out what, um, what things should be. Or as far as... Uh, what that will help us to find every biome that might have resources. Why are you flipping around? Oh, because I, I switched directions. Okay, it's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, do, do, do. Flipping back and forth. There we go. We're going to want a nice 250-ish kilometer periapsis. And let's bend this in a little bit to give us about a 90 degree uh, apoapsis over or a 90 degree inclination over elu so at the periapsis we are going to circularize it's going to be about a 13 minute burn uh, 25 kilometers per second and we have 29 to spare so my math worked out it seems or did it wah ha 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 uh, because that's all the time we have for this episode, and we will have to find out the fate of the uh, Far Horizons next time. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please share and subscribe, and I will see you in the next episode.